Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to give you a quick overview of how to deal with those annoying clicks that can sometimes find their way onto our recordings. Hello, um, hello, um, hello, how annoying hello, is that? Hello. So here we've got uh, just a piece of audio that was recorded as a, an opening introduction to, a, to an OBS video that I was making for the channel. I'll just play it to you now quickly. Hello and welcome to the Logic Pro Beanie Guy. My name's Dave and I'm going to give you a quick overview. Two clicks in there. I'll play it again. Hello and welcome to the Logic Pro Beanie Guy. My name's Dave and I'm going to give you a quick overview. So there they are. Um, in an ideal world, you'd go back and potentially record it again, but sometimes that's not possible. Um, and for whatever reason, the gremlins in the system have created that on the recording. It's an artifact now that we have to deal with. It. So uh, here's a couple of approaches that I would uh, I would take. <laughs> So the first thing to say is that what you want to do is actually make a copy of this. You've got two options here. You can click on the track, hold down Option or Alt, and you can drag it down, and that makes a copy of the track. I'm going to show you the other way that you can make a copy, and this is what I would recommend for the first uh, method I'm going to show you. So uh, you can uh, control and click on the track and choose Bounce in Place. And I'll show you the uh, significance of that. So bounce in place, it just comes up. It's going to put it onto a new track. Uh, the source, choose to leave that for the time being. And there you can see. Now we've got two copies of our original intro. I've got this intro BIP, which is bounce in place. That's the, uh, the bounce in place version. And I've got intro.1, which is just a copy that I dragged down. In fact, I'll rename this to intro copy just so it's really clear which one we're working on. I'll mute the other two tracks. And if I come into intro copy here, I'm double clicking there. One of the things we're going to be using is uh, uh, some functions to edit the audio within this wave and it will permanently edit it. So just for instance, if I showed you uh, a way of doing this here, what I'm going to show you is uh, we go into functions. I've just selected that section and I'm going to silence it. And that's basically taken out all of that audio in that section of the wave. Now, you can see what's happened. I've done it to uh, the copy there. And actually what it's done, it's affected my original recording. So when you do a copy by just literally holding down option and dragging down, what you're actually doing is just making like another instance of that. And, uh, and actually that hasn't made a copy. But you can see the bounce in place version there is untouched. So that is a completely new WAV file in and of itself. So that's just a really important thing to note if you're doing any kind of uh, destructive audio editing. So let's have a go at removing that first click. We're going to our bounce in place file and press E and that will bring up the, uh, the wave. And we can see over here we identified where that uh, offending area was, but we can just zoom in on that. I'm holding down option key now and I'm using my magic mouse to zoom in on that. Uh, this also works if you hold down the button, if you've got a, uh, a wheel mouse, and you can also use the, uh, the zoom function over there. So I'm just going to zoom in right on that so I can now see that looks to be the offending area. Uh, a couple of things you can do here, actually. You can click up in this time. You can see uh, this is the area we are zoomed in on here in this window. You can see the full wave there. But if you can welcome, hold down the and mouse welcome. button and welcome. You can hear it's just playing that, which confirms what we, we we expected. The other thing you can do, where you've got literally the um, uh, the timeline down here, which is going into uh, milliseconds, you can literally uh, click and hold on that. This little icon comes up, and you can drag across. And sometimes that can help you to uh, identify the area if you do it a little bit faster. If uh, this is quite a straightforward one because it's in between two. Uh, words, but sometimes if it's in the middle of a word, then uh, that can be really useful. So I've selected the area, the offending area there, and what I want to do now, I'm just going to come up, uh, and because it's in the middle of two words, I'm just going to use functions here, and I'm going to choose silence, and you can see what that has done. It's actually silenced that section of the wave file. So let's just play that back. Hello, and welcome to the Logic Pro Beanie Guy. And there we go, it's gone. If I undo that and just play the Hello, difference and welcome to the log before. Hello, and welcome. And then after we've used function and silence, 
Hello and welcome to the Logic Pro Beanie Guy. My name's... So that's dealt with that click uh, very, very simply. One thing just to note here, actually, um, I have switched off uh, Catch Playhead and you'll see that it's Hello, playing. and welcome to the Logic and it whizzes past it, but I'm still viewing that same section of the screen. Uh, if you have Catch Playhead on, then because we're zoomed in so closely, that will just whiz past and you'd, uh, you'd never see it. So, uh, so that's the first one dealt with. Um, let's move on to the second one. Hello and welcome to the Logic Pro Beanie Guy. My name's Dave and I'm going to give you a quick... So we're over here somewhere for that one. So what I'm going to do is just actually adjust my uh, my cycle section. So let's have another look at that. And now, because I want it to jump to that, that right place, I can switch on Catch Playhead. I'm going to give you a quick over, 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 I'm going to give you a... Okay, so it's somewhere around here. Give you a quick somewhere in that section there, I think. So let's try and zoom in on that a little bit more. And now uh, let's turn the catch. Well, we've got the catch play head off, so it's not going to jump around. And I can uh, have a good listen. I'm going to give you a quick. I'm going to give you a quick. I'm going to give you a quick. I'm going to give you a. I think that's it. So I'm just dragging across this bar. If you, this is not in the top bar with the wave. This is just below it in this header here with the timing. And you can hear that is the offending section. Now this is actually in the middle of a piece of um, uh, audio. I'm actually talking at this time. So uh, I'm going to take a slightly different approach here just to, uh, to start with. What I'm going to do is go to functions and I'm going to change gain. Uh, rather than silence and I'm actually going to just reduce the gain. So what you can do here, you can to, uh, change relative and you can just click this sort of up or down or you can type in here. Uh, but I'm going to try just a reduction in the gain there of say seven decibels and let's, let's see how we get on. So I'll play that I'm back. Give you a quick over, I'm going to give you a quick over, I'm going to give you a quick over, I'm going to give you a quick. That's quite a bit better. Let's do a before and after there. I'm going to give you a quick over, I'm going to give you a quick. And then uh, the uh, if I redo that, I'm going to give you a quick over. I'm going to give you a quick. Now I can probably go a little bit further and push that a bit harder. So let's do the change gain again, and I will do this time. Let's do another another th three decibels, and it's all relative uh, to to where it currently is. So let's try that again. I'm going to give you a quick over. I'm going to give you a quick over. I'm going to give you a quick over. Now, for me, I think that is um, uh, far less noticeable. And, and bear in mind, this is just a piece of uh, voiceover. If that was um, a vocal or an instrument recording in the middle of a track, it'd be very, very unlikely that anyone would ever hear that uh, when it's uh, built in with the rest of the mix. So um, I hope that's been really useful to you. I'm going to show you another way in a moment, uh, an, an alternative route, which is not using destructive editing. Okay, so the alternative is to use automation, which is a non-destructive um, way of editing, controlling the level. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to select the track and I am going to drag it down again, just so I've got a before and after. Uh, I can mute that original track and I'm just going to rename this uh, intro, I'll put automation. Now, one thing that I uh, would recommend if you're automating something like this is not to just turn on automation with A and change the volume. Because if, uh, if you apply automation through the volume at this stage just to deal with something like this, then um, you lose control over your fader when you're mixing. And that can be a bit of a pain. So open up the inspector with I. I am going to then go into my effects on the, uh, uh, the audio effects plugin. And I'm going to insert under utility down here a gain plugin. Uh, this is a stereo track, so I'm just going to put in a stereo gain plugin. And now I've done that, I can literally just close that down. Uh, I can I can get rid of the inspector now. So automation is now showing, and what I'm going to choose is um, gain. Uh, and it appears you can just click in this here to automate pretty much anything within Logic. But uh, rather than automating the volume, I still want to be able to use my sliders later in the mix. So I'm going to use gain and I come down to gain itself. Uh, 
So now we can see that that's changed to uh, gain there. That's the new automation parameter that we're going to be editing. And what I want to do is uh, initially just click into the track and that will just set our automation line at the current level of 0 dB. What I'd like to do now is just zoom in so I can have a better look. So let's just have a listen to this section just to double check that we're in the right part of the, uh, the WAV file. Hello and welcome to the Logic Pro Beanie Guy. So sure enough, that was the offending click. So what I'm going to do now on our automation line, I'm just going to put in a couple of uh, nodes either side of the wave that will allow us to uh, to start honing in on that area. So that effectively sets the, the boundaries. Now what I can do is click anywhere in here without affecting what comes before or after. So if I add a second one there, uh, sorry, uh, on, the, on the start and a, and a second one there before we, we adjust it back up. Uh, I can just literally click in the middle there and now drag this down. So let me just do that and have a listen. Hello and welcome to the Logic Pro Beam. Hello and welcome. So we can still hear a little bit of it there. Now that probably means that it's, uh, it's coming out a little bit too quickly. So I'm just going to drag this node a little bit further to the right just to ease that back in. So let's have a listen to that. Hello and welcome to... That seems to have done the trick on that one, just with that slightly steeper fade there. And bearing in mind, we are looking a fraction of a second here. So um, what I also wanted to just quickly show you is that the, uh, the volume fader is now still live. If I open up the inspector with I, I'll just move my uh, little screenshot out of the way there. And um, hello and welcome. You can see hello and wel that the slider is completely unaffected by that, which is going to come in really handy when we mix. So there you go guys, a couple of different ways you can get rid of those clicks and gremlins that sometimes find their way into the recordings. I hope you found that useful. Please do like and subscribe to the channel and uh, see you on the next one. Thanks very much.